episode is your boy Q Lewis representing live from the 48205. Man, this is a E Block Radio exclusive because we normally don't do uh interviews. So I was excited to be able to uh bring a very special guest into the building today, man. Uh shout out to my man, let's see, a uh, producer, actor, uh best-selling author uh founder like we just got a lot of stuff going on um he his uh, his reputation and his uh his words speak for themselves man uh but shout out i got my man billy carson in the building what's going on billy hey what's up man i appreciate you having me on your show man i'm looking forward to this for sure man yeah we excited to have you uh, and like i said i've been watching a few videos from uh you know from previously so obviously i, I i'm familiar with some of your work uh but for some of the people who might not be uh give them a little rundown of, like you know who you are and you know where you're from you know beginnings and all that good stuff oh yeah definitely well uh my name is billy carson i found it forbidden knowledge with the number four uh i came out with that round about 2011 uh i decided to want to bring a lot of information that i have been studying for many decades to the people in a way that they can digest and understand it but also information that was hard to source and find. And, um, and so I started doing that. And because of the information I was putting out, it just caught the ears and eyes of TV producers and, you know, different types of TV shows. So I've been on the Travel Channel, the History Channel, the Discovery Channel, the Science Channel, <laughs> every, uh, channel. <laughs> every channel you could think of, the Gaia TV, and now even, my, of course, Dame Dash Studio TV, and of course, now my own TV network, Forbidden Knowledge TV. For sure. Uh, and I've just been, uh, they, they really like me because I had such a wide range of topics that I can cover. I mm -hmm. cover everything from ancient civilizations, aerospace technology, uh, astrophysics, quantum physics, quantum mechanics, esoteric right. wisdom, and knowledge. And so I've been fortunate that, you know, I have a pretty good memory. And, uh, <laughs> right. and all these things I'm passionate about for so many years, it's been, you know, uh, right. really 40 years of, of just research and, and, and uh, investigation and traveling the world three times to get this knowledge. Right. And I've been putting it out in a way that people can digest it. Uh, I also have a certificate in applied neuroscience from MIT and <laughs> a certificate in civilizations <laughs> from Harvard University. Got you. Okay. So you're well accomplished, obviously. Yeah. Um, I, I saw, I do got a question just kind of piggybacking yeah. off of everything you just said then. So all of those were passions. Um, yeah. What, what kind of even drifted you into that direction in the first place? Like what made you so curious? Right. Well, I'll tell you, man, to be honest with you, in uh, 1977, mm -hmm. I was living in, we came down to Miami, Florida from uh, New York City, from Queens. Okay. Uh, trying to find, you know, start a better life and everything. But we went from <laughs> the suburbs in Queens to, right. to the ghetto. <laughs> right, the suburbs in Queens. Right. Ghetto, okay. In Miami, we were like right in the heart, in the mix, in this place called Opalaga. But we lived next Opalaga, to Opalaga, yeah. Yeah, Opalaga, man. Whew. We lived next to Opalaga Airport. I, right? I, I, heard, I heard about that. Yeah, it's a real deal, man. Listen, it's a real deal. I went down there a few months ago, and it's like worse than when I was a kid. Whoa. You okay. know? Yeah. So I was in the backyard looking at the airplanes go over from the Opalaka Private Airport, and I used to just watch the plane. We had no internet, no TV, you know, all this kind right. of stuff. Right? There's no, no cable TV existed. So you go outside and play. And one day when I was back there, though, I saw this object come across my backyard that didn't look like an airplane. I didn't know what it was. It just didn't look like an airplane to me. Okay. It didn't have wings, a fuselage, a tail fin, a cockpit. Right. And so it, I was amazed. And it went across the horizon so fast, like in a split second. And now okay. planes look like they're moving slow from when you're on the ground, you know? Exactly. And I was like, what the heck? What did I just see? And then it came back and stopped. And then it went back out the other way. Oh, yeah. So the next day, it, it, was, it, was, it was crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was the craziest thing ever happened. So the next day, I went to my school, Rainbow Park Elementary. Okay. And I went to uh, the library and I got all the Encyclopedia Britannicas on aerospace technology. Gotcha. And that's when I started researching that next day. I, I haven't stopped <laughs> since that day. Ever since that day. Wow. I started looking for everything. I wanted to see if I could find what I saw. I didn't know about UFOs and aliens and all that stuff exactly. yet. Exactly. And so I thought my, maybe it would have been, um, you know, so I looked at Delta Wing, Swept Wing, didn't look like that. I looked at right. uh, different types of ballistics for ballistic missiles. Uh, I looked at different types of weapons that be, can be launched from uh, from marine vessels, even from submarines, uh, different right. types of advanced tech that we had back then, you know, that was coming out. And I still could not find anything close to what I saw. <laughs> so it just took me down this rabbit hole of research and investigation over many years. I got you. So, yeah, led it to about 40 years of research. And <laughs> hey, that's yeah. a yeah. That's an interesting story. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, like when, <laughs> when I heard like all the, all the research that you had done, I was kind of curious what kind of sparked you into it. That wasn't the answer I was expecting. I can't <laughs> lie to you. Yeah, man. So you, you had a sighting and that's what yeah, it got you going. 
Yeah, that's what happened. I had a sighting wow. and I couldn't explain it to myself. So yeah. my mom told me anything you want to learn is in a book. So I started, let me get that's these books out. Right. You, know? you broke yeah. them out. Right. I got you. And so yeah. like once you uh once you started doing that, and obviously you was trying to feed that curiosity, what's what's the first trip like that you made? And what were you trying to go discover at that point, if you remember? Yeah, I do remember. So the first major trip that I made was to Chichen Itza in the Yucatan Peninsula. Gotcha. And uh, I was like, there's pyramids there. Now, I knew that I really wanted to get to the great pyramids at Giza and Cairo and all that stuff. Gotcha. But, but there were pyramids right over here, right, you know, not too far away in Mexico that I exactly. get, like, get down to the Yucatan for a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I said, let me let me get my feet wet over here first. You know, so mm. 20 now is 25 years ago. Okay. I went to Chichen Itza which was a great experience. I got to go into those jungles down there, you know, take that bus ride through the jungle. They had this phenomenal place. We stopped and had this big dinner at this jungle restaurant type <laughs> setup. It was like this whole new experience, like a new world. Yeah, that's a and, whole new experience right there. Yeah, you know, and then to go down there and see these pyramids and I was actually, you know, able to climb them. Back then you can climb the pyramid of Kuku Khan all the way to the top. Really? Okay. Yeah, now they've roped it off because some people went up there about eight or ten years ago and started vandalizing it and you know, putting graffiti, all kind of um, peeing inside the temple. Oh, God, there. seriously? Yeah, so they, they don't let you climb it anymore, you know, but uh, I, I have a picture of me at the top from over 20 years ago. Yeah. It was a great experience just to go down there. That was one of my first major trip that I could say, wow, I went on this, you know, four and a half hour ride through the jungle to get to these pyramids down in the, in the Yucatan. Right. No, that's dope, though. Yeah, man, and it's like it's like all of the things because I'm just thinking about like all the places that, that you've been, obviously, at this point and like the, the things that you were searching uh, yeah. to find input on. And it's like right. I think you mentioned this in one of the videos about how we have access to all this information just like right in the, you know, on the palm of our hands with all these phones and everything. And yeah. people still kind of just <laughs> neglect to like recognize i won't even call it the truth i just call it information like because it's right. up to you to decide whether you, you know what you feel is true or not but like all this information is available though and right. i guess i guess my question is for you now um coming from an era where like you really physically did have to go to an encyclopedia mm -hmm. how much easier do you think it is now for people oh, who get as curious as you are <laughs> listen i don't even know how a kid can <laughs> fail school nowadays like how can you even how can you fail like you can't you know, right. I mean, I remember coming home one day with an A minus and I cried all the way home because I thought I was going to get in trouble. <laughs> and of course, when I got home, my mom laughed at me. I had never had let anything less than an A plus up to that point. Oh, he went out of doing it. Yeah, you know, and, and it was all books, books, books. And now mm -hmm. it's like at the tip of your finger. Today, I want to know, I want to take a trip to Korea, right. Seoul, Korea. And I want to know what's the best month to go to Seoul, Korea. What's the temperature going to be? And I started asking my phone. What about, this month? what about this month? What about I got all the way to April 2022, June yeah. 2022, and I realized okay, June's the month I'm gonna book my trip to go to Seoul, Korea. Yeah. Now back in the day, you know, I can't just exactly. You know, I would have to look for almanacs and all kind of. It's you know, so it's like man, right now wow. it's like the First best all, you time said of a, life. You said an almanac, man. Most people don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> that's a throw. That's a throwback right there. Oh yeah. I guess I guess we both tell our age now. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're telling the age, man. We're selling it. <laughs> right now, with with your uh, with the TV network, obviously, I know it didn't start off yeah. as a TV network, but when you first started, uh, like the the whole like the whole forbidden like uh, I just call it collection because you got a lot of stuff going on underneath there. Yeah. When you first started, what was your you know what was your grand scheme then? Like, what did you see as the big picture when you first started? Well, I'll tell you what happened. So um, I had uh, the idea of putting videos on my own little video platform. It was supposed to be more like, um, like you know, this platform, like a YouTube type of a platform in a way. Gotcha. Um, this is a long time ago. This is 2011. Okay. And so what happened was the uh, the video streaming company that I signed up with to start doing this, the videos, the streaming mm -hmm. fees were so high for bandwidth back then. Right. It was costing me over a thousand bucks a month for streaming. I had like about maybe 140, 150 videos. I was getting yeah. a million views a month. Right. And I said, okay, I'm paying for people to watch my videos. I got to cut this off. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> it's not and that was forbidden knowledge. That was forbidden knowledge TV. That was yeah. dot TV had just came just, out. Like, I got I had you. Attention. So I turned it off. Curve. Yeah, I said, okay, we got to take a break. <laughs> then fast forward, Netflix. Amazon Prime Video, everybody's coming now, right? With all these streaming platforms. Exactly. And now we got the bandwidth fees going way down. Yeah. And I said, okay, now it's time. After I got on Dame Dash and 
got on his streaming platform for a while. I said, you know, it's time for me to bring Forbidden TV. I had paid to renewal every year. Got you. Oh, you just name. wasn't using it. I just wasn't using it. You can see gotcha. the age of that name is old. So I just <laughs> brought it back, you know, gotcha. and hopped on a streaming platform. And I said, it's time. It's time. Then I was time. It's the perfect timing. I was ahead of my time. Right, for sure. That's what happens. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of times, timing is everything, though. Like, yeah. it really is the thing. Right. I, I know you mentioned uh, the time at uh, Dame Dash uh, Studios. Like, how did that happen? How did that connection happen? Oh, man, it was awesome. So Dame Dash was following me on Forbidden Knowledge on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend and, and partner, Donnie Arcade, uh, you know, we do music together for, okay. for years now, since for, for four or five years. He said, man, you know, Dame Dash is following you on Instagram. I said, he is? I'm <laughs> right, like, that's, wow. that's major. So, yeah, you know, so I went to Dame Dash account and I followed him back. Yeah. I guess he saw the notification and then he DM'd me. Uh -huh. he said, hey man, you know, I got my TV platform. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to do something with you. I said, man, I'd love to do something with you. Right. And he sent me his number. I sent him my number. We got on the phone real quick within a few minutes after the DM. Yeah. And then he said, When can you come out to LA to film some some shows? I said, <laughs> I can come there tomorrow. Exactly. Well, I'm he there. Said, okay, well, meet me at the studio. So I hopped yeah. on the phone and booked a ticket to LA. And I drove, I was on my way to Burbank uh to meet him at his studio mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's like oh i couldn't get over there something happened whatever whatever just come to my house I'm like <laughs> okay no you got me coming straight to his house exactly i'm like what so i i get up I go, okay hey, i'm coming to your house he says exactly, right. press. i rent a car i drive all the way to, to 90210 i'm like damn i'm in 90210 at the top of the hill now I'm exactly like, right. i'm on a tv show <laughs> i pull up to this i pull up to this hotel yeah. I said, yeah, I thought this, they said this guy was fell off. This guy ain't fell off. He got two <laughs> right, chefs, exactly. a full-time driver, two housemates, a nanny, and, and all these workers in the house and stuff. Right. Awesome. Be beautiful house, beautiful family. He he yeah. greeted me like I was his brother from, from years. You know what I'm for saying? Sure. Like we for years. Uh fed me, sat me down. We had we chopped it up for you know for a couple of days, man. Went to the studio and knocked out, you know, 15 shows and stuff like yeah. that. It was a great experience. Oh, that's dope, man. That's dope. Yeah. And I, and I think what you mentioned too about how uh, people's uh, perception of him, I think, is always different once they meet him. Right. I think that's always been the case. Yeah. Now, I mean, obviously, you met you met him, and I know you have met a, a, a lot of influential people yeah. uh, through the time that you've been like you know doing your thing. Mm -hmm. um, who do you think has been the most influential for you? I would say the most influential person now to date um, that would be a famous person. Uh, interestingly enough, I would have to say Chris Brown. Word. Um, yeah, you know, uh, he started a communication with me through DMs, actually. He started okay. reposting some of my content without me even contacting him. <laughs> gotcha. I didn't even know he was following me until people were like, Chris Brown's liking all your posts, you know? And I was like, wow. <laughs> right. Hey, so, you you got to start paying attention to your social media, man. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> it's, like, it's just like these notifications coming so fast, you, you know, you can't see they them all. Know. Exactly. And, you know, so we would have a couple, you know, DM conversations back and forth. And mm -hmm. I really thought it like this brother's really trying to better himself, you know, yeah, yeah, for sure. he, I could see the state and I could see the growth stages in terms of the way he was thinking from back then a few years ago, even until now. Yeah. And we just had a community, a conversation the other day and I see where he's going and he's really trying to become a better person. He's really trying to elevate himself. He's, right. he's trying to gain knowledge. He's starting to research and investigate things and he wants to know more. And I think, yeah. For me, that that you know, a lot of people obviously from the situation that happened in the past and so forth and so on, we don't got to mm -hmm. go into it. But you put you put like a a cap over somebody, you put them into a into a, like this box and say this is what this person is. No, I agree. Yeah, I but agree. everybody, you know, everybody has the capability and, and to grow and change and evolve. And I right. I got happy because I got I got to see that I had an influence on this guy's mindset. For sure. And he really is a person that really wants to grow. So I think for me, he's a super influential person. He's posted my books. He's posted my information, reposted my content. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that for somebody that big with 40, 50 million followers to put information that may be considered gray area or controversial in some cases right. on their platform, I get to everybody that for to see it. Mm -hmm. That was like, wow, this, this is huge, man. I felt like I'm really starting to make an impact on people and, and have a positive effect. Man, that's dope for real. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's hella dope right there. Especially like when you find out that people are a fan of you, that you are a fan of them. Like that's <laughs> that's always yeah, that's always hella dope for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's yeah. awesome, man. You know, yeah. yeah. Now, like your situation though, the whole uh, the whole forbidden knowledge um, like concept. Mm -hmm. Like I, obviously, I know that you you had a thirst and some some curiosity. 
But yeah. did, was it somebody else like that was kind of like ever doing the same thing that you were trying to do? Like, where did you even get the concept from? Though, I guess is the <laughs> is the question. Because like, this, yeah. I know that creative people come come with stuff from like any anywhere. So I'm just wondering, yeah. like, where did your creativity come from? Well, you know, I have been putting information out since 2006 on okay. topics kind of similar to forbidden knowledge, but I was mostly focusing on geology. Got you. Uh, because uh, I started getting deep into geology as I got into astrophysics as an amateur astronomer and things like that, I started mm -hmm. researching the precession of the equinoxes. Now we're getting into, into the movement of this, of this constellations across the sky, which is a 27,000 year old cycle. I realized right. that the cycle was speeding up. Mm -hmm. And so when I realized that 20, the cycle, if this, you know, if you're in a, ra a foot race with somebody, that Olympic race, right? And the, mm -hmm. and your, the competitor comes in one second ahead of you, mm -hmm. that's like a light year in, uh, you know, in, in a race. That's like For a sure. big race. Yeah, it is. I'm talking it's about so I saw the procession speeding up from like twenty seven thousand years on to like twenty five thousand years, mm -hmm. and so I'm saying, what can cause the stars to move faster across the night sky? So I started coming up with my own hypothesis. Could it be that the Earth is moving faster? Could our sun be moving faster around the galactic equator? Uh, could we be orbiting? Could our sun be orbiting another sun? So I I settled on we could be in a binary solar system where we actually have two suns, not one. Mm. As I started digging deeper into that, I started finding out more about the fact that we do have a binary star. There's a brown dwarf star that orbits our sun every 4,200 years, according to uh, astronomers, which just oh. came out only a few years ago. Okay, yeah, Back I was up to that. Oh, yeah. I was putting this out way before it even became a reality in 2017. <laughs> Got you. was ahead of the game again. Uh, way, way ahead of the game, <laughs> you know? And so... That took me down this whole path, you know, into um, studying astrophysics, learning about the star systems. And then, and eventually, I don't know what happened, but that step page that I was talking about, the forums, they started getting ping attacked from gotcha. China and all these other out of the country areas. Right. And I had, a, I had an app and that app started getting uh, attacked and it started going down. I said, well, whatever. So I stopped talking <laughs> about this stuff. <laughs> right. So then I said, happy, yeah. yeah, I don't know what. So I, I said, whatever. I, <laughs> Apple couldn't tell me. And back then it was Android, not Google Play. They didn't turn exactly, it Google it Android, Play yet. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't tell me what was going on. So I said, forget it. Let me just wash this out for a while. I come back. I came back as forbidden knowledge. I said, you know what? This knowledge is like, kind of like forbidden knowledge. It's not like it's exclusive or top secret knowledge that you can't get access to. But I'm going to come right. up with information that's so on the border, yeah. so hard to piece together. that You got to yeah. get here from here to here to paint a picture. <laughs> So I said forbidden knowledge. And I said, I'm gonna come back as forbidden knowledge. And the timing was better than I was more into the time slot gotcha. to bring information. Whereas before it was like it was too radical. Get this guy off the air, you know? <laughs> right, too radical. You don't and you don't want to be you don't want to be played with that with that right. label. Yeah, radical right. is definitely not the 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 no. label you want <laughs> for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and it, hey, look, this is a way off the uh off the subject question, sort of. But like with all of the research you've done though, and this is this is probably really far fetched, but what <laughs> Cause I have these conversations all the time yeah. with a lot of people, but what what is your insight? And I don't want to spend too much time on it because it's not yours. But what is your insight like on uh, shows like Ancient Aliens? Right, like okay. shows that kind of I feel like a little bit take away from our legacy by trying to equate some stuff with aliens. Like I feel like it's it takes away a little bit from our legacy. But yeah. from you doing all the research, like I just wonder like what people like you think. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I think, and it's going to be, it may be an interesting answer for you. So, mm -hmm. uh, now, Ancient Aliens is a mainstream uh, show, and so yes. they have certain parameters, you know, that they got to box into. Even if you're mm -hmm. listening to some of the words that are being said by the, this guest, you'll right. see that the guests, some of their words are been stitched together. You can hear the editing, you know, a little gotcha. bit. So, so it, it might not be their full statement <laughs> that they actually said. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've been a victim of that before, so I know. Uh, <laughs> but I do believe that uh, based on my research and traveling, that mm -hmm. there are uh, evidence of beings that I call them advanced beings from other planets, according yeah. to the text, the tablets, the cylinder scrolls, the scriptures, and everything else that I've gone over all the years, all mm -hmm. the indigenous cultures that I've talked to. But the thing that's going to be shocking is some of these peoples that came here and visited this planet, they were actually black people. What? See, you think aliens, people are thinking about little green men with horns or a little antenna come out their head. Yeah. And right. people that look like monsters and reptiles and all this other kind of crazy stuff. Exactly. Actually, the opposite. Really? The more ancient texts you dig into, the deep, deep antiquity, the super ancient texts, like the Enuma Elish, mm -hmm. the, uh, the Epic of Atrahasis, the Epic of Gilgamesh, 
uh, you know, the, the indigenous stories and handed down from the Dogon tribe and the Zulu tribe, you discover that they all talk about these people that came here from different star systems. And they, the, what's interesting is they knew the location of the star systems, they knew the orbit, orbital periods of those star systems, they right. knew the planets that orbited those star systems, and they also knew all the information and still do today about every single planet, shape, size, and color even in our solar wow. system now. And yeah. they, you know, they knew all this for thousands of years, and it was given <laughs> right. to them by these people. But when you look at these tablets, you discover that people came here that looked just like us. Yeah. And some of these UFOs that have been flying around and they talk about on TV and the news, mm -hmm. there's black people flying these UFOs. I never even thought black about people. it, Doug. That's crazy. Like, I black never thought people. about it. Yeah, yeah, there's black people in some of these UFOs. That's the biggest mystery and the biggest reason for mm -hmm. the majority of the cover-up. Yeah. One of the biggest uh, people in in uh, in the aerospace technology, uh, Norman Berggren, his mm -hmm. his resume can go from here stretch around the planet three times. He was the head of Ames <laughs> Research Facility. Yeah. Okay. All the DARPA black budget projects, all the all the Pentagon contracts for aerospace. He was in the mission control center when Apollo was doing the moon missions. Yeah. He says in his own words in an interview that there were black people in a UFO across mm -hmm. the crater from Buzz when he was making his first steps on the moon. What? And this guy- Wow, I've never moon. heard that. Oh yeah, I've got the interview. Yeah. I can see the actual that raw interview. Crazy. And then I've got the black box, black box audio mm -hmm. of Buzz saying, they're standing across the crater looking at us. That's yeah. from the black box audio from the Freedom of Information Act. But there's oh, black sweet. people, seven foot tall black people watching yeah. us take his first steps on the moon. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. That's And that's definitely, like you said, that's information that they don't want us to have though. No, they don't. I've never, I've never heard anything about that. Yeah, yeah, black people, wow. <laughs> they don't want to hear about that. Right. Uh, so I, I know we, we digging deep into to some stuff and I know uh, we probably <laughs> running out of time. Um, I do want to ask this, though, because uh, obviously I think I'll be doing myself a disservice if I didn't ask. Uh, out of the, all the things that you've been uh, researching and, and, and trying to find the answers to, what has been the most shocking for you? Like, what's the thing that made you like, whoa, I can't believe that? Yeah, well, uh there's a, a documentary I have coming out called Black Knight Satellite, The Untold Story. Mm -hmm. And there is a satellite that's been orbiting this Earth that we've detected since the late 1800s. Nikola Tesla, the inventor of AC DC current that we use right now to power everything that we got running to make this communication work for us. Exactly. And, and, and radios and everything else that he invented, lasers and everything else. But uh, he dis discovered or detected a signal coming from this object covering above the earth in the late mm -hmm. 1800s. Fast forward, 1958, 1957, 58, uh, during the uh, Sputnik missions that Russia was putting out, the first satellites to orbit earth and also one to go to the moon right. and orbit the moon, uh, they detected an object. Even America detected it through the Mercury mission satellites when we were trying to create our space program. And they mm -hmm. detected this object following Sputnik. And Russia also has verified that this object followed Sputnik to the moon right and then fast forward to 1960 it makes time magazine that there's an object above our planet that's in a polar orbit that makes its own course corrections <laughs> and wow. uh that's a, the 1960s article uh the actual journalist that wrote that article is in the documentary i was able to find him in the uk and got an interview from him yeah. and so yeah. this made time magazine right. okay now fast forward again to the 90s the space shuttle missions go up and take HD uh, high quality image and video of the object, which is mm -hmm. on NASA.gov. They put it under the label of space junk. <laughs> this object is on a polar orbit. So right now, you know, people know about orbits that go this way around the mm -hmm. equator of a planet, right? You put a satellite in orbit, it goes around this way. Right. A polar orbit, we couldn't do that until the late 1980s, right. where an object orbits the planet this way. Right. And so when you're orbiting the planet this way, as the planet spins on its axis, you can scan the planet and you can get a lot of topographical information, exactly. heights, heights of mountains, depths of valleys, depths of oceans, how much percentage of land versus water, what areas have uh, particular, uh, you know, uh, gems and gold and, you know, oil and all this. You can get that all from space. Gotcha. So, now, this object is still up there. And it's been up there for it's thousands been up there. of years. NASA thought initially maybe once they really got confirmed it uh, with, you know, with eyes that it was... Um, 
maybe Russia. Russia thought it was us, but then they both said, wait a minute, neither one of us can launch an object that's estimated to be 15 uh, tons into space. Exactly. We didn't have the capability. We we just now have the capability probably to, to maybe try to attempt something like that. So right. uh, this object has been also caught emitting a frequency. Now, this frequency was detected by ham radio operators, and it gives out like this coded location of a constellation called the constellation of Boetis or the Boetis constellation, which is a constellation mm. in our sky. Okay. But it gives the location of that constellation where it was in the sky based on our position right now. 13,000 years ago. <laughs> what? So they're estimating this object could be 13,000 years old. Exactly. This is a huge untold story. Right. That every, right. This object, it comes so close to the earth every two years that you can see it with the naked eye. Really? If you look in the right part of the sky. Exactly. Yeah, that's my biggest thing. And so, and it's still up there. And it's still up there. And it's, it's been, up there. There. <laughs> been up there. Been up there. And they don't want to touch it. And I don't blame yeah. them because you don't know what's going to happen. You said you don't blame them. Bro. Yeah. Now, I found, an, I, found, I found accounts of this in ancient Sumerian tablets that came out of Mesopotamia, modern day Iraq. And so I'm bringing this all out in the documentary and showing that this thing is super ancient. Right. And this was the original all seeing eye that Enlil and Enki were using in these tablets. They talk about having the capability. How right. it ties into, if we, if we need to go over our will, because I think people want to hear this. If you, if you go to Egypt, Mm -hmm. And looking at the Giza Plateau where the Great Pyramid is located, mm -hmm. you find out that the Great Pyramid itself, it gives you all the calculations of the distance from the Earth to the Moon, the distance from the Earth to the Sun. It gives now, you the, the now that idea, yeah, I did hear that. Yeah, right. But how can you get these calculations? Right. You have to have calculations from a satellite. You need the ability to measure distances. Mm -hmm. It also gives you the total land mass of the Earth, and it gives you the center of land mass. Right. To get the center of land mass, you have to have a satellite scanning in a polar orbit. You also have to have, it also gives you the average height of all the peaks of any mountains and hills on the planet. Yeah. So to do that, you have to scan the whole planet from space. Exactly. Calculate the total amount of peaks and then divide them to get the average height. Exactly. You, again, you need a satellite to do that. Right. Uh, a so, satellite that shouldn't have even existed at that point. Mean, that's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> right. That's what I'm yeah. trying to tell you. So. If you look at all the faces of the gods on these uh, glyphs in Egypt, they mm -hmm. have African features, but right. they're all, according to the accounts from the text and all the glyphs, they're not from Earth. Right. That's what I'm telling you. Black people uh, originated from somewhere else. Man, what? Yeah. And hey, that's heavy right there. You go. You just going to leave that right there. <laughs> Good, man, I'm dropping the mic right there. <laughs> you just going to leave that right there. <laughs> hey, that's the hell of a thing to think about right there, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's so many it's so many things. Like, I, I mean, honestly, if you really think about all of the things that are unknown, it's almost scary. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and then yeah. it's it's so much information out there. You got to decide, you know, what's you know what's what, obviously. Yeah. But again, just going back to what you had said previously, there's no reason to to not have to to not take advantage of this access to information. Even right. though I, I do still think that there's some information that. Um, I guess I say this term loosely, they don't want us to have, you know what I'm saying? But I think that at, at some point you can, you can kind of, you can find it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So like yeah. for, for you been doing this for a while, you know, uh, doing a lot of investigating, a lot of, you know, digging, like for somebody who had your same curiosity and kind of want to do the, the same kind of things you, you're doing right now, like what kind of advice would you give them? I would say set goals, you know, mm -hmm. set a goal to take a trip. I was talking to my youngest son uh, just yesterday. He's 21. And I was like, okay. where's your first major trip going to be? He was like, uh, so, so you got to think about it already. You should know right now. Boom. When I ask you that question, it's to come right off of your tongue. Right. Start making a plan. If you really want to get into becoming an adventurer, a real true researcher, mm -hmm. I think that you really have to go out into the field and get your hands dirty. I think you got to get out there. I, I think, you know, there's people who've done a great job, don't get me wrong, from sitting on their couch and getting on YouTube <laughs> and Google. Right. But there's levels to the game in anything you do. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to become an NBA player just because you watch a lot of NBA and basketball footage on YouTube. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay? There's levels. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to get exactly. your hands dirty. So I said, you got to make a plan. Set a goal for your first location and have the reason why you want to go there. What are you trying to accomplish by going to that particular 
site, location, wherever it is, ancient civilization, you know, you want to know about the culture, you want to know about the indigenous people, you want to know about the foods they ate. Right. What is it? What's the goal you want to say? And then start striving and creating these goals. And yeah. people say, well, I can't afford to travel. I can't. Yeah, you can afford to do anything you want to do. It's up to what you want to sacrifice to be able to do that. That's that's the truth. That's, that's true. I mean, you, you can spend you can spend less money trying to go to Miami <laughs> than like go to Africa sometimes. You know, right. Like, right. You know how you play it. Exactly. That's, def- that's definitely the case, though. Yeah. Uh, now I gotta. Uh, I, I'm getting so deep into all of these uh, these research questions and everything, but I know you got something else going on too, though. From what I understand, you're giving away a Rolls Royce, man. Tell me what's yeah. going on with that. Yeah, I'm giving away a Rolls Royce. So I've been yeah. fortunate, man. I've been blessed my, in my life. You know, uh, I tell people all the time. I lived the life of ten men. I've had so many things and been able to travel so many places, and and I've had real, you know, brick and mortar businesses that have done, you know, done well for me. I invested in real estate, did well in the stock market. I did well overall, and. Um, uh, a few years ago, well, that was my second Rolls Royce. The second okay. Rolls Royce was one that um, I'm talk, a, talk about it. Is. Yeah, yeah, the Rolls Royce <laughs> Ghost, <laughs> and uh, beautiful car, man, absolutely beautiful car. Uh, and so what I decided to do, I bought a brand new one just about three weeks ago. Okay, I, mean, I love the Ghost because you can drive it or you can be driven in it, and you yeah. don't have to feel like you don't feel like you're a chauffeur when you drive it. You know what I'm saying? You still <laughs> right. look like the person that owns the car, not the driver. I, you. Know, I like that, that I can flip it back and forth. Sometimes I get driven, sometimes I drive. Yeah. And so this car was one of those kind of cars, beautiful black body mm. uh, with the white interior, white guts, like as we call it, man. Okay. And it's, it's killer. You know, it's really yeah. killing with the suicide doors, uh, sure. you know, V12 twin turbo, you know, the full package, man. It's an incredible car. And uh, like so, yeah, I decided to go ahead and raffle that car off for charity. Okay. I had a choice. I could sell the car. I could have mm-hmm. traded it in. But I said, but what's that going to do for, you know, the people? If I raffle this car, if I got a chance to do a lot of good with that money and somebody who gets it can be blessed and take that car and they can sell it instantaneously, take that money, flip it into real estate, stocks and bonds, whatever they want, yeah, for yeah. Sure. college tuition fees, start a business, whatever, right. get out of debt, get their credit straightened out, you know, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? So 50 bucks a ticket. Okay. And the more tickets you buy, the price starts to drop. Gotcha. You know, so and uh, yes, yeah, get a hundred thousand. How do people, uh, so how do they get the raffle tickets? Like, how do you go about it? Okay, so you go to forbiddenknowledge.com with the number four, four, B-I-D-D-E-N, K-N-O-W-L-E-D-G-E, forbiddenknowledge.com. Okay. And there's a, it says Rolls Royce giveaway. Sure. It's an official third-party giveaway. In other words, I'm not doing the raffle myself. It's a right. third party doing the raffle. If the raffle is going to be done live at the okay. Rolls Royce dealership in Fort Lauderdale, Florida on Sunrise Boulevard. Okay. Holman motor cars. Yeah, you can that's come that's, 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 yeah, Listen, that's 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 where they delivered my newest Rolls Royce, you know. Gotcha. And uh they're gonna deliver it there the same way. And no matter where you are in the world, you can win it. Right. If you can't be there, the car will be shipped to you, it doesn't matter. For sure. But if you can be there, people can come down and watch the raffle live, and I'll be there, right. take pictures, sign autographs, whatever. Okay. You know, and, and uh, but it's official, it's really truly, truly serious official. Uh, and it's a real raffle, and it's gonna help kids. With uh, school uh, school bags, holiday gifts, four thousand holiday holiday gifts, and oh, also I, yeah. And every year, what I do every every winter is I pay single parent final notice electric bills. Oh man, that's yeah. what's up. So the last four years, I did forty six thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand and sixteen. Gotcha. But this year, I'm gonna take a larger sum of the money from the raffle, and I'm mm-hmm. gonna do single family, which is you know single parent. So it's either single yeah. dad or single mom. Gotcha. They let me log into their electric bill. After they fill out the form on my website, they got to qualify. Gotcha. And then I actually log in physically to their electric company. And and pay pay it. That way I know it's paid. Then I log out. Yeah, take my billing information and log out. I've done that now. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. Man, that's a, that is a blessing. I think that a lot of times people forget. Um, and I ain't going to say purposely, but a lot of times like people's own agenda get in the way and they forget about uh, you know, some of the less fortunate or even some of the people yeah. who were along with them at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, yeah, definitely doing your thing on that. Uh, it's almost time for you to get out of here because I know she said you got to get out at 1245. But I did want to ask you about uh, about the book, though. So uh, yeah. woke doesn't uh, doesn't mean doesn't mean broke. Right. Yeah. Woke so, doesn't mean broke. That's the book right here. For sure. Now, tell now, 688 pages. Got you. So it's 600, it's over 600 pages of some game in there. I'm pretty sure. Oh what, yeah. What made you come to this? Uh, like, especially the title, cause the title <laughs> is what caught me because I, yeah. I, I have seen where a lot of times woke does equal broke does. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, 
I just got tired of that that title, you know, that or that concept in people's brain that they put you in a box. Like if you're a woke individual or a conscious person, that it's not good to have money. It's not good to live good and travel. It's not good to right. have nice things. It's not good to have nice watches. I'm wearing a, a Richard Mill right now, you know. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, listen, I mean, I, I you know. You said you got, woke. <laughs> yeah, I'm woke. I got, I got, at my house, I got a Rolls Royce in one garage and a Rolls Royce in the other garage. You right. Know? And, I, and I live in a nice house. And I'm like, why do you have to be, uh, put in this box where if you're conscious and woke, supposedly, you have to be this struggling person. I <laughs> exactly. came from that already. I, had, I grew up with holes in my shoes. I grew up with rips in my crotch in my pants because I was growing so fast and I only had two pairs of pants and had to bleach them and dye them with Ritz dye the next day to have a different color pair of pants to go to school. <laughs> I'm not doing that no more. For well, sure, right. So if, you, you if you're conscious, you know what I'm saying? So when you walk around with this woke mentality and you're telling people the power's in you, we got the power in us and we can create and we can manifest our life and blah, blah, blah. But you can't pay an electric bill. You can't manifest <laughs> right. an electric bill. Something people are not going to believe you. Yeah. You know what I'm I saying? Mean. But so I think that if we're really truly powerful people, which I know that we are, mm-hmm. and if we have the power and we can manifest our own destiny, manifest our own reality, and with the right knowledge and information right. that you can be empowered with, you should be able to manifest abundance 24 seven. Oh, for sure. Wherever you go, whatever abundance means for you, it don't mean you got to be a billionaire. Right. But all, all your needs should be met on time. And when they're needed, and that's what I, that's what this book is about, and it also goes over a lot of financial principles that most of us had never been taught in school. I know I wasn't taught a lot of this stuff in school. Oh, for sure, any so, of the financial literacy stuff, we kind of f- yeah. for sure missed all of that. <laughs> all right, I think it's really important, and so yeah. everything important from to will and testament to different types of life insurance policies you need to have, mm-hmm. uh, how to get rid of student loans. I mean, yeah. the whole kit and caboodle is all in here. That's yeah, that's the number one thing right there. I'm gonna have to give me a copy for sure. And, I got Right now, it's available on Amazon and where else? Amazon.com and okay. or get it on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. Gotcha. It's been a bestseller now for uh, three months. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I can understand why with all the information that's in there. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you get on up out of here though. But before right. you leave though, I just want to uh, give you one second here to leave the people with some final sentiments, man. Like, so if you got some words of encouragement or something mm-hmm. like that, you know, what you want to leave the people with today? I want to tell you, man, look, anything that you want to do, you can do. Don't let family members, friends, co-workers, anybody hold you back. You sit down, you sit down and write down your goals, write out exactly what you want to accomplish in your life. And no matter how what age you are, it's never too late to start working on those goals. Never start, never too late to start working on those accomplishments. Sure. Set forth a plan, put together a plan, figure out the things that you're willing to sacrifice to acquire or obtain those goals and dreams. Because you, it will require sacrifice and it will require an energy exchange. Sure. And if you're looking for financial freedom, you got to remember, money is just an energy exchange. Don't chase money. Chase your passion. If you chase your passion and you fulfill your passion and you monetize that passion, not only will you feel like you never worked a day in your life, money will show up in your bank account as a side effect. <laughs> oh, man, what? Oh, I love that. It'll show up as a side effect. That's right. I like that. Uh, on, on that note, man, we're going to let you get out of here. All right, bro. Billy Carson, man, I, I definitely appreciate the time. You know what I'm saying? We uh, we need to wrap again, though, because I need to talk about stocks and bonds. I know you, you hit on that real quick. And I know you got some ideas about that. Hey, we, let's go. We got other conversations to have, so definitely we'll be in touch. Definitely, man. Thank you. All right, for sure, man. Thanks, everybody, for checking out, man. Of course, again, this is E-Block Radio, an exclusive interview with my man, Billy Carson. Uh, make sure you go to uh, forbid, forbidden with the number four, uh, knowledge.com, right? Yep, that's right. right Got to make sure it's .com. Uh, make sure you check my man out. Got the uh, the best-selling the best selling book here, producer, actor, extraordinaire, and uh, curious guy. <laughs> 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 All right, man. We'll talk to y'all later, man. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks. Peace. Peace.